Masters of the Jew, written by legendary Haitian author Jacques Homain and published in 1944 from the Caribbean. While it loosely touches on communism, Masters of the Jew further explores conflict, resentment, jealousy, climate change in a local community and its remedies that include a unified collective effort, sacrifice, trust and hope. Masters of the Jew is the story of Manuel Jean Joseph, who is a Haitian peasant who has been away from his home village for 15 years because of his work in the sugar plantation fields in Cuba. When he finally returns to his home village called Fonds Rouge after his hiatus, he is shocked to witness that the life he knew is no longer there. He comes back to find the village he once knew is struggling with two devastating challenges that has altered their lives. Firstly, is the division and bad blood between the village into two antithetical factions after a bloody struggle over land sharing and ownership that occurred just after Manuel left the village. The second is that there is now a terrible drought that has dried up the lands pastures and the streams which watered the area in Fonds Rouge. The villagers are on the brink of a serious starvation and realizing this they begin to worry because it appears in these testing times that the village is doomed to wilt just like its crops. Manuel meets a woman called Anais who he likes but she tries to cut ties with him as soon as she learns Manuel is on her opposing side of the two village factions. Manuel realizes that both problems the village is facing will have to be solved if its very lifespan is to be saved. He begins a mission to search for water springs in the nearby mountains to relieve the village because he believes the water would unite the factions together again. After much continued searching, Manuel finds a large reservoir of fresh water in an untouched valley but tells only one person where the water is located. A nice, the young woman he's fallen in love with. At this point, she starts retaining his affection. When she realizes the purity of Manuel, Manuel's intentions and the fact that he took no part in the village bloodshed in the past, she too begins to try to bring the two fighting families together by convincing the women of her faction to help persuade their men to work with the other side to build the canals and waterways that would be vital in bringing this water to the fields. The greatest opposition he has to this vision from the strat is Gavilan, a bitter drunk who lost his brother in the bad bloodshed between the factions. He wishes to keep the field going and is also jealous of Manuel and a nice blooming relationship. Manuel himself attempts to first to convince the men of his own side to work with the opposing faction and calls upon the help of La Rivoire, a respected elder of his faction, to call upon a village meeting. A meeting which he attends and attempts to persuade these men to create a combat. A united group of individuals who work together to achieve goals no individual alone could achieve. The combat is an old tradition which has been abandoned in the work of the field. Gavilan angrily walks out of the meeting and later attacks and stabs Manuel. Manuel, now mortally wounded, reaches home and dies shortly afterwards. But before he does, he asks his mother to keep the cause of his death a secret because he believes that the flesh can only have a chance to survive if the field and bloodshed ends. He says to her, tell Larivoire the will of my blood. That's been shed, reconciliation, reconciliation, so life can start all over again, so that the day can break on the Jew. After Manuel's funeral, his mother carries out his dying wish and asks Larvois 
to call again a meeting with the men of the opposing faction to address them. She tells them of Manuel's last words and his dying wish for the field to end for the villagers to work with each other again, to build the irrigation system that will rehydrate and save the village. Both factions finally agree and Anais reveals the location of the reservoir. The novel concludes with the Kumbite finishing the irrigation system and as the water begins to flood the fields again, Anais tells Manuel's mother that Manuel isn't really dead because she is now carrying his child. A symbol of hope, reconciliation and a message of a fresh start of peace and unity amongst the Haitians and all Africans as a whole, the entire novel successfully delivers. If you have an African novel you want to see Dudu summarize, do not hesitate to comment below. Don't forget to subscribe for more original great Afrocentric content like this. Thanks for watching Mimsy Dudu Summaries.